I'm not really sure how to start this one. So, Rosetta, the, the Palm Door, Palm Door, Palm Door, Palm Door, winner of 1999, um, directed by the Dardeen Brothers, or the Dardenne Brothers, it's probably the Dardeen Brothers, um, so here's the thing, I, I, I don't really know too much about the Dardeen Brothers, um, I know they're absolutely beloved by film critics around the world. Um, usually, if they make a film, th that film would usually make into everybody's top ten films of that year. And I was personally introduced to them um, through the film uh, The Kid with a Bike that came out in 2011. And when, that, when I saw that film, I didn't really get it. Like, now I can see the neorealist aesthetic they were going for and like the really heartfelt story told in this really raw manner but back then I didn't really get it and I haven't really revisited it since then um so I decided to give the Darting Brothers just one more chance you no know, because I do want to appreciate them because everybody seems to appreciate them and when it, when it comes to people talking about their best film most people either point to, I think it's called The Prophet, maybe it's called Sun, I'm not really sure. It's it's one of those, I don't, I don't remember the title of the movie, it came out in 2002, it's supposed to be this great film. It's They either point to that movie or they point to Rosetta. And I just thought Rosetta just seemed like a much more, you know, approachable movie, especially the title. I don't know, it just, I just thought that way. And what, having seen Rosetta, I think I get the Dardeen Brothers aesthetic now. Um, because this movie is really, really good. Um, here, the neorealist style adds so much to the film. Like, right away, we see her getting fired. Kind of like, you know, putting up a fight with her employee, employers. And the shaky camera emphasizes the physicality of that scene. And the main character's frustration. Um, and because she's like this really poor girl whose alcoholic mother runs away during the movie, the the raw, neorealist style adds an unglamorous rawness to the setting, this beatnik feel to it that makes the whole thing, that makes her poverty feel more real. It doesn't feel polished. It feels like it's right up in your face. Um, and it emphasizes small moments uh, with this raw aesthetic to make, the, to make them feel more heartfelt. Um, there's this one scene where, where Rosetta meets this guy, and the guy invites her to his apartment, and they're listening to this really terrible recording of his drumming, and they're dancing to it, and they're eating French toast, and it's this really small moment, and it's done in this, I think it's done in one shot, and because it's shot in such a raw way, it has this strange sentimental feel to it that you usually don't get, at least in a genuine way, you usually don't get this genuine sentimentality in most movies. Um, and I like how it takes that Jean Dillman um, style of repetition to emphasize these moments again and again and again. Um, another reason why this movie is really great is the character herself. Rosetta is one of the greatest characters I've ever seen, not and the interesting th thing is, she doesn't really have a personality. Like, she doesn't really listen to music, she doesn't watch any movies, she's too poor to do any of those things. All she tries to do throughout the whole film is to get a job, and she always tries to get her mother to go on the right path, um, even though in, like, the first 30 minutes of the movie she runs away. Um, she's very stone-faced, she doesn't really emote a lot, at least the actress doesn't emote a lot throughout the film. And, like I said, she wants... A job. That's like her entire point in the movie. And she just wants a normal life. Um, even if that means... Even if that's like a detriment to the people who actually care about her. Um, and there's this great scene where... The guy that I, that I was talking about before... He works at this waffle cart thing. And she wants that job. So there's this moment where she's like trying... She's, ca she's fishing... And the guy comes up on his mo motorcycle, and he tries to help her retrieve this thing that she accidentally threw into the water. And he falls into the water, and because there's quicksand under the water, he's about to drown. Rosetta doesn't save, her, save him right away. She stands there, she actually runs away for a moment, and there's this, like, there's this quiet moment. And you just hear the screams of the guy in the water... And you and all the camera camera's just focusing on Rosetta's face, and you can tell 
that she's like she's wondering if she if she should just let him drown so she can get the job. And she waits and wonders and then she saves him. Eventually showing that she does have a soul, at least. She actually cares about other human beings. But there's by but giving her that moment to just wonder and think about actually letting this guy drown adds so much to her desperation and her situation. Like it adds so much to the character, even though the character doesn't have any personality. By the filmmaking itself adds so much personality to the film. Which is something that's very rare for, for most films. Like, usually they try to write in personality. Here, the camera says it all. The scene says the the length, the length of the scenes, or the, the, the volume of the scene says it all. Um, like, this, because this scene, this, this scene is so powerful because throughout the movie, this guy is nothing but nice to her. She, he, he, he clearly likes her, but even though she, even though she knows that, because let's face it, when when somebody likes you, you know this, you know. But the, even though she knows this, she's thinking about letting this guy drown. It's such a powerful scene, and she kind of makes us question our own morality and and hers at the same time. But eventually, eventually, we kind of come back to the conclusion that she just wants a normal life. The filmmaking just adds such a desperation such desperation to her that these scenes don't make you hate her. Like, they don't make you hate, see her as this, like, hu like human, the human equivalent of rat poison or something. Um, she's clearly a very sympathetic character. Um, she's just 18. I think the actress was also 18. I think this was her first movie. Like, from what I know, this was, like, she wasn't an actress at the time. She just, she, they, the Dardeen brothers wanted such a neorealist style that they actually got, like, a first-time actress for this movie. She was just 18, you know, and when you're an 18-year-old, there's only so much you can handle. But, um, so she just wants to have a normal life. Her, her father's absent, her mother's a junkie or a drunk or whatever, and she needs to support her mother. She barely gets enough water to take a shower. She has, like, constant cramps in her stomach. There's only so much she can take. And she constantly talks about how she just wants a normal life. There's this great scene where she's about to get fired for a job she just got. It's not the first scene that you see. Um, it's, or, it's actually, like, right in the middle of the movie. Where she... It's right after the scene where she's talking to herself in the bed... Telling herself that she finally has a job and that she's finally going to have a normal life. And then the next scene, she's getting fired. Like, right away. And there's this one desperate moment where he's, she's trying to just do her job and trying to ignore the, her employer who's trying to fire her. And she just starts screaming out, I just want a normal life. And, I don't know, compared to most teenage movies, this seems to be about a struggle... That's so much more real and heartfelt compared to most. Like when when we're talking about teenage teenager movies, we're talking about The Breakfast Club. We're talking about Sixteen Candles. Compared to this movie, those movies just feels just feel like like people just talking about first world problems. This is some real fucking hardship. And like I said, the filmmaking emphasizes this. The acting of this, I forget the name of this actress, but she's really good. She just she's. She knows how to just scream out this desperation. And at the end, um, this is a huge spoiler, by the way. She tries to commit suicide. And she tries to commit, su commit suicide by um, blocking all the, all the entrances and all the little, little, little bits of space that the, gas would, that, that, ga that, that the gas could seep out. And she covers all of those spaces, and she just turns on the gas, and she just she just lies down on her bed and waits to die. But then the gas runs out, so she goes out to get another gas tank. And as she's go coming back to her trailer with the gas tank in hand, because and it's quite a heavy gas tank, she starts crying and breaking down. These scenes emphasizes just how much of a human being she is, and. With the context of the, the these scenes, in the hindsight, you can see just how desperate she was in the scenes beforehand. In, in the scene where she's about to let this boy drown, with the context of the scene that comes 
comes afterwards with the gas tank, you can see why she was about to make that choice. Even though she didn't. So she's clearly a very... She's a caring human being, but she's she's up to the point where she doesn't want to care about anybody else. That's some dark shit. Like, she's a character who is forced to grow up, even if that means backstabbing or letting people who care about you die. Like, that's some dark fucking shit. And this movie just... It got to me. Like, got to me in the same way... Um. Uh, my own private Idaho got to me. To me, when you're making a film about people who are in the age range of like 18 to 25, I want you to give me something really dark. Because when you're in that age range, usually you're going through some really fucked up shit. Emotionally or maybe just circumstantially, maybe it's something that's financial. Maybe your parents died. Maybe you just don't know what to do in the world. Maybe you're poor as fuck. Maybe you're rich as fuck, but you're just depressed. You gotta give me something really dark, because I'm in that age range, and I know being in this age range fucking sucks. And (laughs) when I watch movies like The Breakfast Club or Sixteen Candles, I don't get that, you know, emotional darkness that should be there. And Rosetta is a film, alongside a film like My Own Private Idaho, this is a movie that really nails... That inner turmoil that everybody goes through. Um, but it does end on a slightly bright note. There, while she's crying with her gas tank in 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 arms on the ground, the the boy who actually who she actually um took 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 his job from, I'm not sure. The boy who Rosetta took his job from. I'm not sure if that's grammatically correct. Fuck that. So she took her took his job because she basically snitched on him because he was like selling waffles that he cooked on his own, so he was getting more money. But um, she basically she basically told the guy who owns the cart because um, the the boy just works on works at the cart. He's just kind of like, you know, he's just he it's just a job. There's another guy who's own, who actually owns the cart. So she snitches on the guy who owns the cart. So the guy who owns the cart fires the boy, and she gets that job. So even though that happened, the guy, the boy comes around to Rosetta's place to see if she's okay. And I think at the end, she kind of smiles to him, and that's when, where the film ends. So I feel like she's just accepting this gesture of kindness. I'm not sure. I just hope so. Because... He, You know, even with a film like My Own Private Idaho, which is a really dark movie, the film makes sure to end on a hopeful note for humanity's sake, you know. You know, at the end, two cars pass by the River Phoenix character. One car slows down, to, and and the guy comes out, and he, like, takes everything that River Phoenix has because River Phoenix is just sleeping on the road. And then another car comes by, and then... A guy comes out of that car and he takes River Phoenix with him to, to somewhere safe, I hope. So even this film understands that you need to end on a human note. You can't just end on such a dark note to a point where everybody's depressed, everybody doesn't have any hope for their lives anymore. No. Clearly, there are people who care about her. Rosetta, I mean. So you gotta show her... Because the film's emphasizing that she's such a sympathetic character, and she's such a, she's such an empathetic character, you gotta emphasize the fact that she can accept other people. Um, and at the end, I feel like she does. So the film kind of rounds up the whole journey. You see her being, you see her inner tor- turmoil. You see her, you see her inner turmoil hitting a point where she's betraying everybody who cares about her. You see her feeling guilty about the turmoil to the point where she's about to kill herself, and then you see the breakdown, and then you see her see her accepting the gestures of kindness from other people. It kind of rounds up this really dark journey of this girl, while at the same time, like I said, portraying it 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 the, the whole thing in such a realistic way, which is something that I that I appreciate so much. So yeah, it's. It really is as good as everybody says it is. It's I would call it the masterpiece. I mean, I'm not 
I'm not sure if this is their best movie. Like, maybe some of their other films are way better than this one. I'm not really sure. So, but for now, Rosetta's really, really good, and everybody should see it. So, yeah, Rosetta, there we go. Um, bye.